Well, I make a lot of my own clothes. That's something I can thank COVID for. I got back into making some of my own garments and stuff, but I have found that since I have been at home and not traveling, I've really got accustomed to elastic waistband uh, shorts and, and, and like my yoga pants that I make. Because they're super comfy and I just, I love wearing them and all that fun stuff. So, what I do, now I will cut my pattern out and I don't even measure the waistband of the fabric. What I do, I will take the elastic and I only use this type of elastic right here, okay? This is non-roll waistband elastic. It is super heavy, super thick. And it's perfect for waistbands. I buy the I buy this on 50 yard spools, okay? So the thing with this stuff is though, what you want to do is just measure it around your waist or take your actual waist measurement where you want your waistband to fit and subtract six inches. Then when you have a tubular, your garment's going to be tubular, of course, just overlap it about an inch and a half. And with your sewing machine, just, just sew it together so it forms a tube. And then what I do, I will mark my elastic with a black Sharpie. I'll fold it in half after I've made the tube out of it. And I'll a Sharpie line here and here. And then... I will match up the two Sharpie lines and fold it in half again and mark it here and here with the Sharpie. Now I have four equal marks all the way around my ring of elastic and that's what I use to pin to my waistband corresponding with the center front, the center back, the center side seam on both sides. And then all I do, I just stretch the elastic. Whenever you're attaching elastic for a waistband, you never stretch your fabric. You only stretch the elastic when you're sewing it down. Now to do that on a serger, since the Triumph is a cover stitch, uh, if you don't have, if you, if you have just a four thread overlock machine without the cover stitch side, I'm going, show, I'm going to tell you two different ways you can do this, okay? So first I have a piece of fabric, and I'm going to sew this to the wrong side of my fabric, okay? So when you start out, and even if it's already been joined in a circle, you're going to do it the same way. <coughs> and all I'm going to do, now I'm going to drop my knife because I don't want to cut my elastic waistband. And all I have, I have it set up for a basic four thread overlock right now, okay? So, I'm just going to line this up with the edge of my presser foot. I'm gonna put my stitch width, and it really doesn't matter though since I've dropped the knife, but if you're gonna leave the knife up, have it all the way up to 7.5, and I'm gonna put the stitch length at three. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to feed this underneath my foot, and I'm just keeping both edges lined up with the edge of my foot here. And now I'm wanting to fit this short piece of elastic all the way to the end. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up this one end. Let me grab me a strain. Uh, where are they at? They are right over here. Okay. And I'm just going to take a pin. Now you want to be careful that you don't run the pin through the machine if you have your blade up. Or regardless, you never want to run a straight pin through the machine, whether your blade is up or down. But I, here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to pin it at both ends. Let's take this back out for a moment. We're going to get both ends pinned down. 
Now, if this was in a tubular for form, these two ends would be a seam where this was sewn together. And then I'm going to find the center of my elastic. And you're just going to fit your elastic in by doing this. So it's folded in half. Now I'm going to put a pin right here. There we go. Now I'm going to find the center of my fabric. Line up all the edges and find the center of the fabric. And then I'm going to pin and I'm just going to finger crease that. Put a little crease there with my fingertip and I'm going to line up the pin on my elastic center to that crease mark I just made. And I'm going to pin both layers together. Now, since this is a smaller piece, this is plenty big enough because when I sew, I'm going to stretch out that elastic so it lays flat with the fabric. See that? See how much extra fabric there is there? When you're surging this edge down, you're going to stretch the elastic out and then surge. So to get started, I'm going to line up the elastic. I'm going to get under that foot really good. And we're going to, we're going to let it actually surge without stretching for just a little bit. Because we have to be able to get a hold of the elastic behind the foot. Okay. Now that that's done, we're going to take this one and we're going to this until it lays flat with the fabric. Okay? I'm going to hold on to the back of it and I'm going to go slow. Okay? I'm going to pull that pin out and then I'm going to hold this one down. If you're doing a waistband, you can put in as many pins as you want. But see that? Let me turn this camera a little bit. So all I'm going to do, now that I've got a good start, I'm going to hold on with this hand to the back of my elastic, but I'm going to stretch with my front one and get it all lined up and start slow. And now, I'm going to take out that pin and finish surging it. Okay. Easy peasy. Now, well, those scissors are duller than a butter knife. When we look at this, you can see how wonderfully that gathered it up. But when I first started making my garments for elastic waistbands, I'd make a casing sew it to this fabric and leave a hole in it so I could run the elastic through it. Well, you know what? That takes a lot of time. <laughs> and I wanted, to be, wanted it to get done quicker. Now, if this was actual garment, I'm using the dark thread so we can see it easy. But for an actual garment, I would actually match this thread color to the fabric so we can't see it. Now, what we're going to do, instead of making it Cube, we're just going to fold it over and there's two ways to finish this, this waistband. If you have a cover stitch like the Triumph does, you can use a cover stitch to sew it down or you can take it over to your sewing machine and sew it down. I'm going to set this up for a cover stitch. I'm going to raise my presser foot. <clears throat> now I have the open toed foot on. I'm going to take that off for a moment because I'm going to take the needles out. This is the foot I'm using. This can also be used for cover stitch. And I'm going to, yay, my tool is where I left it. <laughs> That's always a good thing, right? <laughs> so I'm going to remove my needle threads because I will only need one needle thread. Yeah, and I'm just going to, since I'm going to use a different colored thread that I would normally use. Okay, there's that. 
I'm also going to take out my uh, looper threads because I will not be using these. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to open up this door and take it off. I'm going to attach my cover stitch table. Come on, you. Get in there. Hi, Marion. Go in there, you. Sometimes you got to talk to it. But it also helps if you have it on. So the first thing I got to do, though, I'm going to drop down my upper looper. You know, see that's no longer moving up and down? Okay. And then I'm going to attach my table. Helps if you try to attach it in the proper direction. There we go. <laughs> oh, too fun. And next, I'm going to remove both of my, over, my O1 and O2 needles. I don't need those in there anymore. So one. And why I like those size 90 needles is because that heavy waistband elastic, boy howdy, that, that heavy duty needle will really go through them. And the, another thing I like about them, they're color coded. The tips of those size 90 serger needles I talked about earlier, they have a blue coating on it. So if you lay them down, they will, you can instantly recognize what they are and where they came from. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna put this needle in the C1, the chain one position. It's the needle, chain needle position all the way to the left. all the way up and then we'll tighten it up. Here we go. Oops, I didn't have it right in where it needed to be, obviously. Make sure the flat side of that needle shank goes to the Okay, you we're gonna get in there this time. I'm all thumbs tonight. Come on now. Play nice with me. <laughs> what am I not doing right? Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's give it another go here. I'll loosen it a little bit more and make sure I have it all the way up. Oh, I see what I've done. What I did, I twisted it while I did it, and that won't work. Uh. <clears throat> well, what in the heck am I not doing right, everybody? Here we go. Okay. Had it in the wrong hole. There it is. Now I see it. <laughs> now you're in the proper guide. There it is. So now it stayed in. Oh boy. That was fun. I'm going to drop my uh, lever from surging to threading. I'm going to rotate the hand wheel towards me until it clicks. I was also watching to make sure that needle didn't you listen, when you insert a needle, listen to your machine. When you turn the hand wheel, you should not hear any metal touching metal. Okay? If it does, that probably means you don't have it in, your needle inserted all the way up. And next I am going to do my C1, chain needle 1. Okay? And I have this over here. I'm going to move my lever over to chain cover stitch. I'm going to lower my threat, my air threader. Give that a little clippy. Now there'll be a little bit of noise. And 
and my needle is all nice and threaded, now I can reattach my foot that I'm going to use. You could also use the standard foot that came with your serger. Okay. That's done. Now I need to thread my chain looper. Okay. So I'm just going to move this one cone over and use the same one. Oh, come on, you. Yeah. There we go. Alrighty. And I can close that door now. So over here, I'm gonna move the camera just a bit so you can see, kind of see what I'm doing. I'm gonna insert my end of my thread from front to back. Make sure it doesn't get caught up on anything. I'm sitting at an angle, it's kind of hard for me to see because of the camera. There we go. And then I'm just gonna take Take this and put it in behind this little metal bar right here, this little flange. It's going to come over and around, and then down here through this, right there. It doesn't, for the cover stitches, this has no effect, neither does this. So there's ULC, C is for your chain looper, which is what we're going to use. You're going to open up the side door. I'm going to move the camera just a hair. There we go. Open up my side door. There's a little metal box right in here underneath that cover. That's where the end of this thread will come out. You want about four inches of thread when it goes through. I'm going to give this a good clean cut. And then we are going to insert that about half an inch or so into the chain looper threading port and press the push to thread button. And I see my thread, it just came out right here in this little area where it's supposed to. That's all threaded. So now we can move our lever back up to surging. We can shut this door. We can close, shut this on our table, but first, the stitch width does not matter because we do not use the cutting knife whenever we're using the chain cover stitch side. And I'm going to leave, I'm going to make sure my stitch length is at three for this process. It's the only thing I had to change. And we're going to shut this door and we are good to go. I'm going to raise my presser foot up. And now what I'm going to do this time I am actually going to use some wonder clips. Let me reach behind me and grab a few. Okay. So I'm going to fold over my waistband and I want one right in the very center. And then I just want to make sure I get the ends nice and even to get started like so. If you had a tube formed, it's even easier than this. And what I'm going to do, you see there's be the front, here's the back. All I've done is folded this over, and now I'm going to use a single chain, that chain stitch, and do like a straight stitch right on top of this serge line. Check it out. And what I'm going to do, I'm lining up this edge right here where I've previously surged right with the edge of this foot. And this is where I'm going to stitch it down. Okay. So I'm going to let it stitch a little bit before I start stretching because you'll have to stretch it out again. Here, kneel down. There it is. There we go. Now it's started. Right here where I have it clipped, I'm going to hold on to the back of this and I'm going to pull it in front of me and stretch it out until I don't see any wrinkles. And I'm just going to go slow. After I get more of a grip back there, 
I can go a little bit faster. And all we're doing is catching the edge of that fold line where I first surged the elastic to the fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to fold it over, make sure these ends are nice and even. And when you fold that over, now there's plenty to hold on to back here. We're going to stretch it out nice and flat. Now I'm not pulling the fabric through there. I'm letting, I'm just holding, putting tension on back here so it's nice and flat because I'm pulling, I'm stretching from the front and the machine is just feeding it through. Now, if I had used beige thread on this fabric, you would, you could really see, but check out, this would be the front side of it. And check out that waistband. No casing. You can see where I sewed it with that red thread right there. I'll take this back over to the other camera because there's a bit more light over there. But that's how easy it is to put elastic waistbands on shorts or a garment or whatever project you're wanting to make. Let's go back over to the other camera. Wasn't that fun? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> All righty. So once again, there's a little bit better light over here than over there. But here is, would be the front. Now, if I'd use the beige thread, of course, you would never see this black line of thread. But I wanted to do that so you could see what this looked like. Check out, this is non-stretched. And now I'm going to stretch it all the way out. There's no threads that popped. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The back side, which is what would be next to your skin, looks like this. And if you stretch it, check it out, nothing popped. I have that stretched as far as it will go. Perfect elastic self-casing waistbands. That's how easy it is.